Hockley, Texas, Hockley County native, Dr. Ronnie Jackson, Rear Admiral, retired physician to presidents in our White House, and he is in the runoff for uh, Texas 13th Congressional District, the GOP nomination, the Republican will win in the fall, so this is the race. His opponent is a, um, a lobbyist and person groomed, recruited and groomed and backed by the swamp. That's all you need to know on that side of it. Uh, Dr. Jackson, real question. Uh, being a physician, having been around this issue, having been a special advisor to the President of the United States as well, uh, in this crisis or pseudo-crisis or whatever it is, over the, though they made sure it was a crisis, whether it should have been or not, under this Wuhan virus, one of the things that's come forward to people's attention is just how little of our pharmaceutical manufacturing is in the United States. Now, everybody's focused on China. The fact is, India produces a lot. India is a country that needs to, to grow its economy, and they do a pretty good job. But it's uh, a little bit uh, interesting that, like every other uh, business, it seems like tax policy and legal policy and things over the last couple of decades have simply, it's not just cost. A lot of these other things have just driven manufacturing out of the United States. You're actually talking about uh, policy issues related to this. Uh, tell us what they are. Well, you know, I, uh, you know, whereas we were talking earlier, you know, uh, I'm in this race with, uh, with one other gentleman who's my opponent. I think his plan basically is to get elected and then uh, find out uh, what his marching orders are from uh, Hurd and uh, Max Thornberry. But I'm not going to do that. I'm going to tell people right now what we're going to do for this district and, and how we're going to make things better. There is, you know, despite all the hardship uh, you know, with our economy uh, related to this coronavirus, there are, there's lots and lots of opportunity in this uh, for, for the 13th Congressional District, for the Panhandle, and for North Texas. And one of the biggest things is if you haven't uh, heard this, you haven't been listening, but President Trump is adamant that we are going to bring our pharmaceutical industry back from from China and India and back to the United States. He is absolutely adamant about that. What that means is there's about to be a lot of legislative pressure and a lot of legislative action to make that happen. That's going to be followed by a lot of money. That's going to come back to the United States. It's just a matter of where it's going to come. My point is there's no reason why that can't start right here in the district I'm running in in Amarillo, Texas. We have an unbelievable opportunity here. Like you said, we have great taxes. We have a business-friendly environment in the state of Texas. Amarillo uh, has, has a great access to the interstate system, the rail system. It has a great international airport. We have a medical school association with the Texas Tech uh, uh, Health Sciences Center. We have the, the medical school component up here. We have a dental school. We have a school of pharmacy. We have a veterinary medicine school. So we, have, we are a perfect environment to, uh, uh, to, to be the, the groundbreakers and, uh, and the tip of the spear on bringing the pharmaceutical industry back to Texas and, or back to the United States and specifically back to Amarillo, Texas. So I'm going to work hard uh, even before I get to Congress. I've got connections right now in the White House. Uh, there are people talking about doing this right now. People are figuring out how this is going to happen and where it's going to happen. I'm engaging with people at the White House. I'm engaging with business leaders here in Amarillo, and we are going to get the ball rolling, and we are going to, we are going to be the first to come out and make this happen, and we're going to do it right here in Amarillo, Texas. Well, you know, one of the things that's interesting is that uh, in the, the, the last many years, the Keynesians and the, the Democrats and really even Republicans on the uh, manage the decline side argued that we couldn't have manufacturing here um, and other things, and yet pretty much the people who were honest economists knew that that's, that's balderdash. Yeah, labor may be higher, but Germany has some of the highest labor rates in the world, and yet they're a manufacturing powerhouse. What we had was tax policy and other legal policy that, that helped to drive it out of the country. In other words, a company may gain a labor cost in one thing when they go to some other country, but they also lose on other sides. There are other hidden expenses, other direct expenses sometimes that, that compensate for those. But what, what do we do? What, what is the problem with pharmaceutical manufacturing? Because there are plants that have only been idled in the last decade all over this country. Right. Well, you know, there's two issues working here that are going to make this happen. One is despite, you know, the money involved in it or the profit or anything else, it's been identified now as a national security issue. So there's going to be a lot of push right. to, because this is a now national security issue for us to make this happen. But you're right. You know, the president has done incredible things for our country over the last three years all across the, the business front. You know, that's why our economy has been booming, namely because he's gone in and he has just deregulated everything mm -hmm. because these regulations and all this liability and everything. So the president now has realized, 
that there's another area of our economy that needs this attention, the attention that he's given to the rest of the country on the business front that, that made our economy what it was. That's the health care industry. So we're, the president's adamant about coming in and, and uh, reworking the tort reform and the liability and the regulations and the SOP. All these things add unbelievable cost to doing business in the pharmaceutical industry here in the United States. The president's going to get rid of a lot of that. He's made it. He's made it a priority. I talked to him uh, two weeks ago, and I mentioned this to him, and, and he's very, he's very excited about making this happen. So he's going to well, get in, and he's going to do what he does, and, and we're going to make it profitable. Yeah, the corporate tax cuts and, and being able to expense uh, expense capital investment or you know new equipment things has made a massive difference in pulling people back in. And this pharmaceutical is one of the most regulated parts of the economy. And for people who say, "Well, deregulation would make it unsafe," do you think less regulation in the United States would make drugs less safe than no regulation? In other words, Canada, India, right. oh, I mean, uh, right. China, India, and places like that. I mean, come on. It's a no-brainer all the way around, and I'm glad you're focusing on that. The website is RonnieJacksonForTexas13.com. Um, I'm sure you got social media and all that up. You want to let people know where they can go, I guess, give camp contributions to the campaign at the website, that kind of thing? You bet, yeah. You go to my website, that's the Ronnie Jackson, F-O-R-T-E-X-A-S-13.com. You can find it there. You can also find me on Facebook at Ronnie Jackson, number four, Texas, T-A-S-A-S-1-3. And, uh, you know, look me up there, follow me on Facebook, and uh, I'm excited about this. Now, I want to tell you, Robert, I'm just going to tease you with this, because we'll talk about it next time. But I'm not okay. leaving Wichita Falls out. We're going to talk about bringing Space Force to Wichita Falls as well. Very good. The time's got us, thanks.